Okay, I'm just about to take the show down. So this is a super quick tour of the show that you either saw or missed at Vuterina's The Stash Gallery, Naked Selfie, My Life as an Neonaturist. Starting with La Sirena, Whooping Mermaid in the Drowned City of Londinium. And this is various incarnations of the Neonaturist as mermaids. And then I put a real mermaid in with the mackerel tail because, you know... That's the, 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 the God-given right of the artist. You don't have to, don't have to be real if you don't want to. Um, this is the first time I wore body paint, 1981. I was getting dressed at Christine Binney's house in Warren Street. We put our dresses on back to front by mistake and decided that as we were going to Steve Strange Night and the weirder the better, we might as well go out like that and uh, uh, cover the rest of our bodies with body paint. It's cool we did not fade to grey in honour of the late great Steve Stranger's song, We Fade to Grey. We were kind of blitz kids, but also rebelling against it, and we did not do monochrome. So this one is the first ever Neonaturist cabaret. We were booked before we decided exactly what to do for a dinner dance in Mayfair. We found an old orange parachute in a skip in Theatre Land. We bought some... Uh, slightly dodgy fruit in Berwick Street Market. Uh, we recited poetry and did a kind of Carmen Miranda thing, as far as I remember. But the thing that stuck in our minds the most was that Diana Dawes was there and Jen gave her a banana, which was a sort of fabulous carry-on moment and probably influenced us forever, along with the fact that we were brought up on carry-on films and, you know, they're not PC, but they're fucking great, aren't they? And that's me and Christine uh, in body painting about 1981, same time. So this is a more recent one. This is actually the last, if I can get far enough away, the last cabaret we did. It was a cleansing fire ritual on the winter solstice on the, at low tide on the River Thames. And this was thanks to Anne Bean and Come Hell or High Water. It was a pagan reinterpretation of Santa Lucia, uh, which was a pagan festival appropriated by the Christian church. I'm actually in a church. I hope no one hears me say that. Um, yeah, fire ritual, cleansing ourselves of demons. But as I said, it was December 2019. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we all know what happened next. And that's the reality. That's Jen playing the violin and me and Christine generally making noise and being banjos. This is the... Um, whopping living at the B2 Gallery with the absolutely amazing Derek, Daw Derek Dawson, for fuck's sake, David Dawson, um, who let us take over his gallery for a week. Our cabarets were usually 20 minutes long because we felt that was about as long as anyone could cope with performance art. But this went on for five days, not dissing performance art. Um, and this was day four, by which time everyone else had disappeared except the hardcore neonaturist and Bruce Lacey. And um, we had also run out of money, so we had a charred bone barbecue on the banks of the River Thames. In fact, between the high and low tide lines, because the police had told us that that was a kind of no man's land where they could ignore our antics, uh, taken over by outlaws and performance artist since Dickensian times. <laughs> this is a fabulous play put on by Emine de Morian, Shahrazad in Notre Dame Hall, The Knives Beside the Plates. It was a kind of matriarchal, matriarchal rewriting of history, I'd say. I was first woman, first artist. There was a lot of menstrual blood or fake menstrual blood involved. Grayson Perry was the leader of the tribe of men. I was the leader of the tribe of women. There was a lot of fighting. There were like sausages. Was, I, I don't know, all sorts of shit. You, there's a film of it you can see. Uh, okay, this is the first performance I did for a very long time. It was Alternative Miss World at the Globe Theatre in 2014. And I was Miss Surf Mama because I just published my book Surf Mama. I, for reasons best known to myself, uh, thought the literary world would not appreciate me being naked. I, I kind of saw myself as a bit of a JK. No, not, I'm not even going to say that. I saw myself as a lit, a woman of letters. 
So that I better not be naked. So I wore a neon fur bikini and a shark mask. Because we all know that the literary world loves that shit. And <laughs> that's the Venus of Willendorf. And it's called The Rise of the True Venus, I think. And Bobby, as the fake Venus, has been discarded on the floor at my feet. Um, this is Andrew Logan. This is Grace, oh, that's not Grace and Perry, that's me. That is Grace and Perry, who was comparing that night. Um, best of all possible worlds at Studio Voltaire. This is my return to body paint after 35 years? 25 years. <laughs> 25 years, okay. Um, and... This was a great moment because it was in the NHS retrospective. It was a wonderful gallery. We were allowed to body print the whole of the interior of the chapel. And we did a fabulous performance at the ICA. And instead of people going, ah, get them off stage, what is the shit? As they had last time, people really appreciated what we were doing. We had a lot of journalists came in. We had people asking for autographs and giving us champagne and, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's hard at the top. It's hard at the bottom. Um, that's me about to body print the chapel. There's a body print over there I'm about to show you that goes with that. Another scene from the alternative Miss World. This is uh, the moment I realised I was opening the show at the Globe Theatre, which was sold out. And I had this outfit which involved... Uh, five inch stilettos and a mask, but I'd forgotten to put holes in the mask. I was basically blindfolded. I kind of made a prayer to the uh, Hawaiian Mamala God, who I'm representing here. If I get round the stage without falling flat on my face and breaking any bones, I will worship you forever. And I did. And that's a picture of me in the next scene when I'm surfing across the stage. Marie Antoinette party pre neonaturism, maybe a bit new romantic around the edges here. And um, I had a party, I made a dress, Kerith Wynne Evans made a film, Tempus Fugit. Uh, I used a lot of a pigment called um, Caput Mortem Deadhead in honour of Marie Antoinette. And while not being a royalist, I think we all have to say that Marie Antoinette's fate was a case of blame the woman, blame the foreigner. And she never did say anything about cake or brioche. Um, I say this is my debut at, the Cov at Covent Garden. It's my one and only appearance at Covent Garden, thanks to um, Michael Clark. I had imagined myself like this. That's probably... Rudolf Nureyev and uh, Margot Fontaine, Dance of the Dying Swan. That's me being a near naturist cheerleader the way it actually happened. Uh, these are body prints from Studio Voltaire. Almost through. And finally, a moment with Derek Jarman when he put us in a video for Lords of the New Church. Uh, Dance With Me was the song. We were covered in metallic body paint all day, which seeped into our pores. But you have to suffer for your heart. He uh, did try to put us in Caravaggio, but I think we were so far from his aesthetic that uh, he ended up on the cutting room floor. But it was always an honour to work with him. And... Um, that's the end of the show. Thank you and good night.